Hi, it's Hillary. Welcome to my channel where I discuss books, games, and lifestyle. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more of my shenanigans. Today's Books and Builds episode covers a library that I built in Newcrest for my Legacy Challenge and the first four books in the Bookmobile Cat Mystery series by Lori Cass. These books are Lending a Paw, Tailing a Tabby, Borrowed Crime, and Pouncing on Murder. This series follows a librarian named Minnie Hamilton, who is the assistant director at a small town library in Michigan. Minnie's dream legacy is to have a bookmobile that she can drive across the county and deliver books to people who can't always visit the library. And of course, um, she has a cat named Eddie. Eddie followed Minnie home from a cemetery one day and has not left her side since. Though, to be fair, Minnie wanted to keep the spunky tabby on her own. She was secretly hoping that nobody would claim this stray cat. When the bookmobile is set to go out on its first drive, Eddie actually follows Minnie to the library, leaving her with no choice but to let him tag along or else she would be running late. And of course, the bookmobile visitors fell in love with Eddie from the moment they met him. So a running theme throughout the first few books is Minnie's dilemma about keeping Eddie on the bookmobile because um, she doesn't tell her boss, Steven, that Eddie is on the bookmobile and he is the director of the library and he tends to be very old school and he just doesn't like innovation. He fought Minnie at every step when she wanted to get the bookmobile started. So she doesn't think he's going to approve of having a cat on the bookmobile. And the duo's first drive seems to be going really well until Eddie escapes the bookmobile during the last stop, which leads Minnie to the body of a local man who has ties to the bookmobile. And Minnie wants to leave it to the local authorities, but after a while she realizes that Something is amiss, and she and Eddie work together to solve the case. In Tailing a Tabby, Minnie's driving her bookmobile when an upset woman waves her down because her husband has a medical emergency. As it turns out, the husband is a local artist who spends every summer in Chilson and plays word games with his wife. So Minnie gets to know them and um, the husband disappears from the hospital and is found passed out over the body of a murdered woman who th he knew. Um, and Minnie decides that it's up to her to clear her new friend's name. And then Borrowed Crime begins with a bookmobile run gone very wrong. Not only has Minnie lost an important grant that would keep the bookmobile running for another year, but a volunteer also dies on the bookmobile's route. And the death is initially ruled an accident, but the person's family is angry and blames Minnie, so they want to sue the library, and that adds to some of the tension. And um, meanwhile, Minnie again suspects foul play, and decides that she's got to intervene and figure this thing out so she can actually proceed and so the bookmobile is still able to run. And then we finally get to Pouncing on Murder, where Minnie is excited about maple syrup season. Just after receiving a jar of local syrup, the best local syrup in the area. The person who gave it to Minnie dies in a sugaring accident. Minnie soon meets the friend of this person who died, and that friend is certain that it wasn't an accident. This person fears for their life, and they think that they are also in danger. So Minnie steps in to help, because that is what she does at this point. Um, she's basically an independent sleuth, Anyway, um, this is the first book in the series that made me gasp out loud when something happens. Um, if you've read the series, like toward the end, if you know, you know, I got very upset. I was telling all of my friends about it. It was upset in a 
reasonable way. Like, I, I was not mad at the author. It's just, like, the plot. It's just the thing I feared happened. Um, anyway, um, I knew that there would be a positive outcome because that's generally how cozy mysteries go. Like, the characters you're super attached to are never the ones who face serious danger but it felt like the first time that the author took a risk in the series and I have to give her credit for that so yeah uh probably my favorite in the series so far I won't spoil any of the books but I do want to discuss some of my observations from reading the first four installments I'm relatively new to cozy mysteries, but I've noticed some common tropes and patterns within cozy mysteries. So in the real world, it would eventually look suspicious that the local librarian is always at the center of these quarterly murders. And I also think it would be difficult to pretend that the fictional town of Chilson, Michigan is as calm or quaint as the characters pretend. Anyone from a small town knows that one murder would shake the community to its core, let alone four murders in one year. It's just a bit unrealistic, um, but to be fair, it is fiction and it is a cozy mystery, so I can forgive that. In the real world, people would have so many questions. In the warmer months, Minnie lives on a houseboat because her aunt runs a boarding house and plays matchmaker for strangers. That's pretty cool that she lives on a houseboat. Um, it reminds me of tiny homes, which genuinely fascinate me. Could I live in one? Probably not. Do I think I could live in one? Yes. Um, Houseboats also make me nostalgic for Nancy Drew, Danger on Deception Island, and now Ted Lasso, apparently. Um, hopefully, Minnie does not make herself sandwiches with spoiled ingredients, but I know I made Nancy Drew sick on a few too many occasions. And throughout the series, you get to know some of the characters in Minnie's life better, including her best friend, who runs a restaurant three seasons out of the year, um, a doctor she has a thing for, the local school principal who's a little chaotic but has a good heart, a notorious patron who is a bit annoying um, but relatively harmless. Also Minnie's co-workers, one of them's a clerk, one's an IT person, and they all just have defining characteristics without fully feeling like caricatures. Um, I definitely do get like old sitcom vibes out of these characters, so maybe they are caricatures and I am just being too generous, but um, that's just how I feel about the people in this series. And it's not always obvious who is behind the mystery, so I appreciate that because if it's too obvious, then it's not fun for me. I need a little bit of a challenge. These books are far from literary masterpieces, but they don't have to be. They're fun. I rated them all three stars, but it doesn't mean that I think they're bad. I am a little concerned about a specific trope I've noticed in romance within mystery books, and also just mystery books, um, centering librarians as the lead. So I am hoping that this trope does not last for the rest of the series. I also plan on reading the fifth book soon, and I intend to catch up all the way to book 11 when it comes out later this year. As of right now, it should be out on August 1st, so we shall see if it actually is released and if I get to read it soon enough. I should finally talk more about the builds. This build is loosely inspired by the Chilson Library, or at least how I picture it in the books. Um, the library is recently renovated, and I believe that it is in the town's old high school, so I should probably check that, um, and I should know this by book four, but I read a lot. Don't blame me for not knowing what I'm talking about. I also made two restrooms, one with bathroom stalls from university, and then a family-style restroom. 
Um, the family style restroom has a toddler potty, so Sims can bring their toddlers along wherever they go. Um, I also added some toys and a Wabbit tablet to the children's section. And the layout of the children's area is designed for story time, even though libraries don't function like real libraries in The Sims. But I just thought it was a fun detail. And then um, the rest of the main floor has books, computers, a chess table, a staff lounge area, and I tucked Minnie's office away behind the staff lounge. The second floor has Steven's office and some empty space. So I did this by design so I could make adjustments and add things as I buy more packs and get further into the legacy challenge because um, in the legacy challenge, I am slowly building up new crest with each generation and having libraries is probably the most important thing when you're starting a legacy challenge. And I really like the look of Steven's office. It's kind of like cold and um, a little more, I want to say distant, just like his personality than Minnie's office. Um, and if you saw Minnie's office earlier, it was small, cramped, a little messy because she's got a lot more going on and she's a bit chaotic and yeah, um, that's, that's how I imagine their offices anyway. And, um, yeah, so the exterior of this build is not my best work. Um, but that's mo mostly because I got tired of building by this point. I guess I should say the exterior of the building is fine. Um, it's the landscaping that you're about to see that is not so fine. Window placement doesn't really make sense. Um, like maybe in the real world, this is how it would look, but, um, <laughs> Just wait until we get to the landscaping. I struggled with it and I was definitely ready to be done by the time I got to it. I added um, a nice seating area outside behind the library so people could go out and grill because who doesn't grill at their public library? Like, I am getting extremely close to the end of the build, so I am adding a fountain and um, just a few other things to the exterior. Like I mentioned, the landscaping was a bit of a struggle because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't have a reference photo. I just kind of went off my imagination and sometimes that's enough. This time it wasn't, but I'm working on the finishing touches. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, and please like, comment, and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. I will see you next week. Bye!